After a playing appearance and a winning season in 21-22, it's been all downhill for the Charlotte Hornets. While injuries to LaMelo Ball and Miles Bridges missing a season have stunted or basically erased the progress once seen, the silver lining is that it allowed them to get their second true franchise cornerstone, Brandon Miller. While last season was abysmal in Charlotte, for a few reasons I believe this team will at the very least be back in play in contention this upcoming season. This is obviously all dependent on the health of LaMelo Ball, as any success Charlotte hopes to have anytime soon will be, but should he remain somewhat healthy, I think we see real progress in Charlotte this upcoming season. They made additions at the deadline as well as in the offseason and are beginning to resemble a legitimate team. Today I'm going to be going over the Hornets offseason, the roster at large, and why I believe given health that Charlotte will at the very least be trending in the right direction. I'm going to start with the main reason I believe Charlotte will return to at least semi-competitive ball this season. I believe this Hornets team will be competitive again due to their new coach, Charles Lee. The most pivotal move of their offseason was hiring a new coach, and I think they nailed it. Lee has been an NBA assistant coach since 2014 and spent last year with the champion Celtics after five in Milwaukee. Lee has been a part of title contenders for the past half decade and was also a part of some solid Hawks teams before then, including the 60 win number one seed in his first year in Atlanta. Lee has been the top assistant in both Boston and Milwaukee since Darvin Ham's departure to LA in 2022 and brings a trail of championship pedigree behind him. He's also just 39 years old and this makes me think it'll be easier for him to connect with the young core in Charlotte than it was for 62 year old Steve Clifford. The second biggest reason I believe that there is a window for Charlotte to improve is because the Celtics, Sixers, Knicks, Bucks, Cavs, Magic, Pacers, and Heat are the surefire playoff teams in the East this season, but after that it gets very light. Not even considering the fact that injury taking out one of those eight teams isn't impossible, this leaves you with two playing spots up for grabs. The teams competing for these spots will be the Hornets, Hawks, Bulls, Raptors, Nets, Wizards, and Pistons. You can definitely count out the Nets, Bulls, and Wizards, and in all likelihood the Pistons, although I think they at least improve. This leaves you with the Hornets, Hawks, and Raptors competing for two playing spots, and while I think there is an argument for either of the other two over Charlotte, they'll definitely be right there with them. The major player move of the Hornets offseason was re-signing Miles Bridges to a three-year $75 million deal. If you don't like Miles, I completely understand, but I'm just going to discuss the implications of this basketball-wise. This is a descending contract, meaning the most money is in the first year, and this is an outstanding structure for the Hornets situation that will make this contract even more valuable later on. He is making a bit above 27 million this year, exactly 25 million next year, and a bit shy of 23 million the year after that. Contracts like these will be very important in the apron era, especially when you're hopefully, meaning that he's worth it, going to give Brandon Miller a max extension at some point and that will be costly. Miles became a bit of a volume scorer with all the time missed by LaMelo, but I believe that with LaMelo healthy, his efficiency will return to where it's been in the past. Miles is a 27-3 guy who can shoot the three at a decent clip and a great third piece alongside LaMelo and Miller. The other non-draft move of any significance was getting in on the Clay Thompson sign and trade and getting Josh Green in two seconds for nothing, as well as Reggie Jackson, but he was just cut. I like Green as a connective piece, and he is one of the guys I'm talking about when I say I feel like this is starting to resemble a real team. He has been a near 40% three-point shooter over the past two years and was a solid rotational piece for Dallas. You receive a quality young role player in a few seconds for just using your cap space and that's a good deal to me. The last leg of the Charlotte offseason was their draft selection and they selected T. John Salarm with the sixth overall pick catching many off guard. Salarn is definitely a project that I figure new coach Charles Lee thought he could develop. I wouldn't expect much of an impact on this year, but should things go well, he could become a core piece. Now that we've gone through the offseason, I want to talk about the guys who were already here, starting with LaMelo Ball. His concern is really just health. He has only played 22 and 36 games in the last two seasons respectively, and it would be really unfortunate for such a talent to continue to be derailed by injuries. LaMelo is a great volume three-point shooter and playmaker, and is good enough to lead a playoff level team to me. On the bright side, he just turned 23, so time is definitely on the Hornets side. LaMelo is an all-star talent who I believe could become all-NBA caliber who is a joy to watch. He isn't a perfect player, but should he be healthy, I have no doubt that he will become at least a top 15 to 20 player at some point. Hoping the injury stuff can go his way this year, because this all rides on that. The Hornets' other franchise cornerstone is last year's number two overall pick, Brandon Miller. He is shaping up to become the dream tall scoring wing and will be a great fit in pretty much any lineup. He averaged 17, 4, and 2 in 74 games in his rookie campaign, including over 37% from deep on nearly seven attempts a night. While he will be 22 about a month into the season, while LaMelo, who just turned 23, was drafted three years before him, there is still immense room for growth and I believe Brandon Miller will become at least an all-star talent in this league. The mold is perfect for a scoring wing today and should he have a playmaker like LaMelo by his side consistently look out. While this team goes as LaMelo's injuries do, 
I also partially believe they will go as Mark Williams injuries do. He is the X factor for this team to me, and should he come back healthy, I think he will be a major piece in this team's success. Mark was the 15th pick in the 2022 draft, but has only played 62 games over his first two seasons, including just 19 this past season. He had a pretty serious back issue this past season, which is obviously cause for concern. What isn't a concern, however, is his skill on the court. In his rookie year, Mark put up 9-7 on just shy of 66% true shooting in just 19.3 minutes a game. Despite only playing 19 games in year two, in those games, Mark put up 13-10 and 10 on 67.5% true shooting in just 26.7 minutes a game. While double-doubles are great, it is Mark's defensive ability that doesn't show up in the stat sheet that might be the most impactful part of his game. Having a rim protecting big is one of the most important things in basketball for me, and Mark Williams has the potential to be a dominant one while being a highly efficient lob threat for LaMelo. He is 22 years old, right in the middle of B-Mill and LaMelo age-wise. While Miles Bridges is definitely the third most talented Hornet at the moment, I think Mark Williams is the third most important for their long-term success. While this Hornets team could use a bit more depth, I still like a number of the role players present as connective pieces. We've already discussed Josh Green, and I think Grant Williams could be a good piece like that as well. Combine this with a quality backup big in Nick Richards and a young backup ball handler in Trey Mann who excelled after his trade to Charlotte last season, and you have the makings of a decently well-rounded team. The other two role players who will be in the rotation are Misic and Cody Martin. While Misic definitely has some redeeming qualities as a playmaker, his scoring efficiency and three-point shooting as a guard is definitely worrisome. However, last year was his first year in the NBA, and he really only started getting his feet wet when being traded from Oklahoma City. He did show improvement as the season went on, but if he doesn't improve as a shooter, he'll have trouble finding a contract after his current one. Just look at Markel Fultz. Cody Martin is an interesting situation as well. He has only played 35 games over his past two seasons and has had a steep decline from his 38.4% from deep in his 2021-22 campaign. Is Cody getting back to being somewhat of a floor spacer and decent role player out of the question? No, but his 30% from deep over the past two years is definitely worrisome for his place in the league. To fill out the roster, you have Nick Smith, a former first rounder with some potential, and vets Seth Curry and Taj Gibson. Seth can still space the floor and Taj can come in and get a few boards, but if these guys are major rotation pieces, I don't know how much success this team is having. To wrap this up, I think an organization that has been more or less awful since its inception is finally headed in a real direction. Having two core pieces with big injury concerns isn't great, but should they stay remotely healthy, I think we see real growth from Charlotte this upcoming season. They may not make the playoffs, but I think this team will at least be in playing contention and will at the very least win 10 to 15 more games than their 21 this past season. If LaMelo and or Mark Williams miss significant time once again, this could all be out the window, but you will at least have some culture building with new coach Charles Lee and another high draft pick in that circumstance. While this team is far from where they want to be, they are definitely headed in the right direction and that's somewhat rare with this franchise. That's going to wrap this one up. If y'all could like the video, sub the channel, and hit that naughty bell i would really really appreciate it. it would help me out a ton we are on the road to 5k comment down below you know what are you expecting from the hornets this season again you know if you if you're not expecting much i can't really blame you but i think you know again they made the play and they were a winning team a couple years ago when last time lamello was really healthy add brandon miller add mark williams I think this team has potential to at least, you know, be in that play-in conversation that, you know, around 500 mark, you know, you know, that 9 to 10 seed. I don't think they're better than any of the top eight in the East, but as I said, I think they are right there with Toronto and, uh, or who was the other team? Atlanta, T Toronto and Atlanta. Uh, I think they're right there with those teams and should be in contention for play-in and should be headed in the right direction. It's going to officially wrap this one up. Once again, if you're going to like the video, sub the channel it would help me out a ton and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.